In this Sunscreen Empties video, I'm gonna share with you all the sunscreens that I used in 2023. And when it comes to anti-aging, which I'm all about here on this channel, sunscreen is probably the best anti-aging skincare product that you could probably use. If you are not gonna use anything else like serums, retinol, even nutritional interventions, sun protection is key for anti-aging. Before I dive into my sunscreens that I used in 2023 in this Sunscreen Empties video, let me know down in the comments what your favorite sunscreen has been this year. Okay, so we're rounding out 2023, moving into 2024. A lot of these sunscreens that I'm gonna share with you in this Sunscreen Empties video are sunscreens that I have honestly used prior to 2023 and continue to use because I love them so much, as well as there are some products in here that, that I may not carry into 2024 just because the look and feel and everything like that just didn't work for me. All of these offer a fantastic protection against UVA, UVB, as well as visible light to a certain extent. Most sunscreens that I have in here that are chemical are Korean sunscreens because US sunscreens, American sunscreens, my eyes are super, super sensitive to pretty much everything, air, light, oxygen, as well as chemicals. They burn my eyes significantly. I cannot use avabenzone, octocrylene. Filters like that are just not great for my eyes and they tend to sting my skin and cause irritation, which I'm not looking to experience because of my just mild rosacea. I'm trying to calm that down and keep it under control. That being said, the first sunscreen that I've been using that I used up and have continued to buy, in fact, I think I have like two more bottles, is the Madagascar Centella Hyla Sika Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50 PA4+. When I say that I love this sunscreen, that is probably an understatement. This is a fantastic sunscreen. If you've used it, you probably understand. You probably bought this or repurchased this many, many times like I have. I mean, I probably purchased this more than half a dozen times throughout 2023. Like I said, I have two more bottles sitting in my skincare pantry, which is my closet. And I'm gonna take this with me on my trip to Texas where I'm going to Texas to visit family for Christmas. So I have this, I'm gonna use this because, in, in addition to some of the physical mineral sunscreens, because this leaves no cast. There's no discernible or noticeable cast on my skin. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure how this fares on deeper, darker skin tones. Let me know down in the comments. Let other people know as well, just in case other people are looking for this sunscreen. But for me, there's no discernible cast. Like I said, it doesn't leave a white film, but it does just boost the overall glow of my skin and it provides a nice glow to my skin. It's very moisturizing. It is a tad bit shiny just because of its moisturizing capabilities and it's reflecting light and reflecting the UV. But that being said, extremely moisturizing. It has a few antioxidants in here. It has Centella Asiatica extract as well as Camellia sinensis. I love Camellia sinensis just because this is basically green tea extract. Green tea extract as well as white tea, black tea, they help to inhibit MMPs, matrix metalloproteinases, which are enzymes that are activated by the sun, by pollution, by visible light that degrade collagen. So having something like an antioxidant like green tea extract may be helpful for combating the components or the, the contributing factors to skin aging. It also has Centella Asiatica extract, like I mentioned before, which is a soothing botanical extract that may, that also has protection against UV, may help to reduce redness. I have to say though, that I was using a Centella Asiatica extract that was just pure Centella Asiatica from this brand. The skin is a Skin 1000, or yeah, Skin 1004. This is the, this is the overall brand. And I have to say that it caused a lot of redness. It had a counterintuitive effect. Niacinamide does the same thing. It's supposed to help to niacinamide, Centella Asiatica extract. These are two fantastic anti-aging ingredients. Niacinamide help, may help to reduce glycation, may help to reduce redness, but it has the opposite effect on me. It induces redness, redness. But when formulated in a serum moisturizer sunscreen like this, the, the Hyla Sisa Water Fit Sun Serum, when it's, when it's formulated in a product like this, it tends to not have the same reaction. That being said, I don't know if you notice any redness. I have it sort of camouflaged with a mineral sunscreen that I'm gonna review in just a second. Yeah, it doesn't seem to impart the same redness or irritation or inflammation that the pure Centella extract does. That being said, some people love that extract. Some people love that. It's an ampule, so it's like a hydrating ampule. 
I can't use it anymore for my skin just because I developed like contact dermatitis with it and I don't wanna, I, I'm just gonna take a break from it from, for now. But like I said, just formulated in a sunscreen like this in a, in a small amount is fantastic. In terms of the sunscreen filters, they, this has Uvenol A+, Plus, which is fantastic protection against UVA, UVA being the primary driver of skin aging, as well as UVB invisible light and infrared radiation. This also has Uvenol T150, in addition to Isotrizinol. So these are filters that not, are not necessarily approved in the United States, but they offer a breadth of protection that the, the sunscreen filters like avabenzone and I don't know, octoculin, octoxin, octinoxate, they just don't provide the same stability or the same, same powerful UVA filtering technology. And so this is why I like to, I, I tend to reach for Korean sunscreens when it comes to the chemical sunscreens that I use. And again, the filters in here are non-irritating for my eyes. I can put them all over my face, on my eyelids, underneath my eyes, and I am Perfect. It's amazing. This also has vitamin E, which is a fantastic antioxidant. And this has a little bit of niacinamide, and which I seem to tolerate just fine. And it has hyaluronic acid, which provides that moisturizing effect. So when it comes to anti-aging, you want to reach for a sunscreen that not only provides you a wider breadth of protection against UVA, UVB, as well as visible light and um, like pollutants in the environment with those antioxidants, but you also want to reach for something that is going to be hydrating, that's going to plump the skin, smooth out the skin, and provide that much needed hydration. So yeah, tomorrow when I go to the airport, when I'm flying on the plane, I'm probably going to wear this just because the the cabin in an airplane is super, super dry and it extracts the moisture from your skin. So that's why I try to sort of boost up the moisture quality when I'm flying, when I'm traveling, and this is going to be fantastic. So switching gears, I have the Elta MD UV Physical Tinted Face Sunscreen SPF 41. This is a physical sunscreen, meaning it's just all mineral, zinc oxide for the UVA protection and titanium dioxide for the UVB and I think UVA2 protection as well. So it is a broad spectrum sunscreen. It's offering SPF of 41. A lot of people try a lot of people try to reach for just SPF 50 and, and don't go any lower. I personally am okay with 30 and above. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with doing 40, 30. I'm okay with going on the lower end because it, offer, it still offers a good deal of protection. In addition to just the mineral protection against UVA, UVB has iron oxides in here because it provides a tint. I'm wearing this on my face right now in addition to a another layer of a just pure mineral sunscreen with no tint. So it's it's brighter than what you would see from here. This is a, just on its own, it does make my skin a little darker. So this may be great for people with deeper skin tones compared to mine. Uh, but that being said, I'm okay with wearing this on its own and I tend to combine it or put it on over a, another layer of just a pure mineral non-tinted sunscreen because I feel like those mix in well and create a lighter hue for my skin and it just looks great in my opinion. And the iron oxides help to provide blue light and visible light protection. Blue light, visible light may also contribute to a reactive oxygen species as well as collagen degrading enzyme induction. So it's great to have some protection against that blue light from our screens, from our devices, the visible light overhead from both the sun as well as again our screens, our devices, the lights that we have in our homes. Trying to provide just like extra protection is fantastic with those iron oxides. This also has a good deal of antioxidants as well. So this has quercetin. Quercetin is a polyphenol found in things like onions, apple skins. There is some studies suggesting that quercetin helps to just boost the overall quality of an SPF by providing extra UV protection against UVA and UVB. There is also alpha lipoic acid, also great for providing just a little bit of extra protection against the UV as well as the pollutants in the environment. Pollution can also contribute to skin aging by inducing the reactive oxygen species, the ROS, oxidative damage, inflammation in the skin, as well as those collagen degrading enzymes. So having just an extra boost with antioxidants is something that I always reach for when it comes to sunscreen. And most sunscreens have some extra added antioxidants in there, unless it's like a no frill sunscreen, like from the Vanny Cream line, or I don't know, does CeraVe have a SPF? I don't use CeraVe sunscreens, but just like a, a plain no frill sunscreen that doesn't have anything added but the filters. I tend to reach for something that has, you know, a little bit of extra added protection from those antioxidants because even if you know not all of it is getting into the skin and protecting and some of it is just like degrading at least some of it's going to have some benefit I, I like to have at least some more benefit that's why i have personally a holistic view or approach to anti-aging or promoting 
and protecting you know what we have the collagen in our skin through nutritional measures through exercise through meditation through you know all these different factors in addition to skin skincare and skincare products i try to have a, just a holistic and i try to throw as much as i can at it some people just want a simplistic approach and that's fine but me personally i like to have as much as i can that is just you know not overburdening myself obviously but this is a the elta md UP, uh, spf of 41 i've been using this for i don't know like since 2018 maybe or 2019 and i've been loving it ever since ever since i'm gonna buy some more going into 2024 you'll see this on this channel i'm sure again so uh, this is something that I definitely recommend for anyone. It's very soothing. There's no irritation at all because it is that mineral filters, no chemicals whatsoever. And also just to let you know, both sunscreens that I just showed you, the Madagascar Centella Skin 1004, as well as the Elta MD, these are both fragrance free. So you're not gonna have any fragrance. It's gonna be gen gentle on the skin, generally speaking. And uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Okay, here's a sunscreen that I've reviewed on my channel. I've reviewed a lot of these sunscreens on my channel. So I'll I'll try to leave cards up and links down below in the description so you can check out the reviews. But this sunscreen that I bought in 2023 that I used up is the Color Science Total Protection No Show Mineral Sunscreen SPF, broad spectrum SPF of 50. This is a water sweat resistant sunscreen. I don't really believe that just because it is kind of greasy feeling on my skin and I do feel like I could sweat it off or you know water will do some alterations to it so it's not going to add the extra protection that I need but this no-show mineral sunscreen is a non-tinted sunscreen so color science I think I have a I think I have a couple of reviews on my channel of the color science tinted mineral sunscreen which I love I also, there's also the bloom like the one that blooms into your skin tone I, I love that one as well that that one's a great sunscreen that being said those mineral sunscreens those the the tinted sunscreens kind of look like makeup on my skin which is not a look that I'm t necessarily going for unless I want to camouflage something for a video for a sit down video and it's just not a look that I'm going for for my everyday. This no-show sunscreen is blended. Uh, this has zinc oxide, so that's the only mineral that is providing that UVA protection. So zinc oxide isn't fantastic for providing a good deal of UVB, UVB protection, but there is an, another inactive ingredient in here that provides some more, I think it boosts the overall SPF. Doesn't really bother me. Beauty looked local to salicylate. How do you, I don't even know how to say it. There's some of these words I just don't know how to say, but it's like the third ingredient after water and uh, alkyl benzoate. And this provides just boosted protection. So it's not necessarily a all mineral, pure mineral sunscreen. That being said, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't really burn my eyes or anything, that, that filter. But some people say it's a little deceptive, the marketing, color science being you know a little deceptive in their marketing. I can't say that for sure, but I do know that it is an SPF of 50. This this no-show sunscreen, it again, not non-tinted. I don't think there's any iron oxides in here, so I don't know if it, 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 oh, it says it protects against blue light and infrared radiation. So remember when I was saying that blue light, visible light, cause it can contribute to skin aging by inducing re uh, reactive oxygen species? So can infrared radiation from the sun. So this, I think it's through the antioxidant protection or the antioxidants that it has in here. So it has mushroom extract in here, as well as some word that I haven't even seen before, a dimethyl mexoy chrominal. And this is an, an, an antioxidant. It's regarded as a super potent antioxidant. And I, I think this is the only product that I've ever seen that ingredient in here. If there's another if there's another sunscreen or a skincare product that you've seen that ingredient, let me know. But it, it's similar to structure in vitamin E. So it's you know pretty much vitamin E in terms of its structure. And I think that those both will provide that infrared radiation protection as well as that blue light protection. But just overall, just cosmetically speaking, there isn't much of a, uh, there's not a significant white cast when you compare it to other just pure mineral sunscreens, non-tinted. It does leave somewhat of a white glowing cast on me, but you know, that being said, it, it's not like, it wasn't my favorite sunscreen, but it wasn't also just, I guess, abhorrent in terms of the overall cast and the appearance on my skin. That being said, I've been using this without any tinted sunscreen over it, and it's felt fine, it's looked fine. I think it does kind of look a little, you know, off. It doesn't 
doesn't necessarily blend well and make me look like I am just 100% without anything, which is kind of the look I'm going for, just like having nothing on. Again, provides good protection. I probably won't buy this again in 2024. In fact, I probably, I don't know if I, I foresee myself buying another color science sunscreen in 2024, unless again, I get that bloom sunscreen. And I will only really use that for maybe sit down videos when I need a little bit of touch me up, you know, for whatever reason, just to hide, you know, redness or the rosacea that I might have that day. But yeah, I probably won't buy the no-show sunscreen again. If you use it, let me know down below what your thoughts are. And there is another sunscreen that I bought in 2023 and I bought quite frequently also in I think like 2018, 2019, and beyond, you know, up till this year. And I've actually reviewed this on my channel. It is the Dermatology SPF of 45. And this is a, it's marketed as like a facial moisturizer and it's marketed as I think medical grade skincare. I'm not sure if they've changed that since I started using it. But the Dermatology, the SPF of 45, it's, it's a combination sunscreen. I don't have a bottle here because I threw it out. I was done with it, I threw it out. Next time I do a skincare empties video or a sunscreen empties video, I'll make sure to just hoard all of the bottles so I can show you them all. But this one I've been using quite frequently. It is a non-tinted sunscreen. The, the There is a tinted version that I also really, really like. It has sort of like a swimming pool smell to it, but it's supposed to be fragrance free. There's no fr added fragrance. It offers fantastic protection. The non-tinted version that I'm talking about right here is, there is a slight tint, a slight, or a slight cast, a slight white cast or glow that I can see to a certain extent on my skin. But again, it just provides an overall like boost to my complexion, a nice glow to my complexion, and it's not super noticeable. People want to be able to pick it out and be like, you're wearing sunscreen, you're wearing a, min a mineral sunscreen. Because it is a combination sunscreen, I think it has zinc oxide as well as octanoxate for the UVB protection. It has niacinamide in there. One of the reasons why I kind of moved away from using the dermatology is because of the ni niacinamide. But since I can, just, I you know, I guess I can tolerate the niacinamide in the Centella, the Skin 1004, just fine. Uh, I probably go back to using the Dermatology. The Dermatology Tinted SPF 45 uh, Skin Moisturizer, sometimes I will combine the two, the non-tinted and the tinted, just so I can tone down on the oranginess or the, the darkness of the, of the tint. A lot of tinted sunscreens are just like too dark for my skin tone or too orange, and so I have to really put it on another layer of just pure white mineral sunscreen to blend it in and provide a good coverage that's, that's more natural to my skin tone. That being said, it both of them are the Dermatology Facial Moisturizers SPF 45. Both of them, the tinted and the non-tinted, fantastic moisturizers. Super, super moisturizing, but not greasy at all. You know, it's, it's just, provides a, a nice plumpness to the skin that I love. Okay, up next is the Herborean Korean Skin Therapy CC Cream. This is a CC cream that has an SPF of 25, I believe. And I got the Clara version. So I don't typically wear CC creams and I don't know, necessarily know if you would categorize this as a sunscreen. I mean, it has an SPF of 25. I don't use anything lower than a 30, but the reason why I bought this was because I wanted I wanted like a CC cream type makeup that offered UVA, UVB protection, as well as visible light, blue light protection when I film my sit down videos. I'm not wearing this right now, but sometimes I will use this as sort of a makeup in a certain extent when I do film some of my sit down videos. This comes out white. It's kind of like the Color Sciences the Color Sciences sunscreen that blooms, that, that comes out white and just blooms into your skin tone. This is sort of the same technology and I really do like this. It does look like you're wearing makeup, not on necessarily the videos that I'm <laughs> that I'm filming because I'm far enough away, I have lighting and everything like that, but this one does provide fantastic coverage. You know, if you were, if you if you wear makeup, this might, I don't know, this might be enough for a foundation and it's providing SPF of 25, which again, arguably might not be enough for protecting against the aging, raging rays of the sun and the UVA, UVB, but it does provide iron oxides for that blue light and visible light protection, which I need when I'm filming these sit down videos because I have lights coming at me and I am in a room where I have windows and everything like that. So I try to have some protection and I find that this is enough just for those videos. It just completely eliminates any redness, any imperfections. It is a fantastic makeup, if you will, a great foundation. I don't put anything else over it and I don't use anything else with it. I think it's perfect for my skin tone. 
It doesn't come out like super orange when I rub it in. It is just a fantastic, fantastic color. But I have to say, it is a Korean sunscreen, and I mean sunscreen filters, which I love, but it does have added fragrance in here, and that's something that I can't get like behind. I, I, this is why I don't wear CC creams or things like, you know, something like this on an everyday basis when I'm out and about, because I don't like the fragrance. I don't like the smell of this fragrance in here, but if you're, you might like the fragrance. I don't know if you're into fragrance, if you don't care about fragrance, you might not care. This is just a fantastic CC cream, in my opinion, that offers fantastic, or at least sufficient protection for me and fantastic coverage for my skin and just just overall even evens out your skin tone. It's just fantastic. I don't need a ton of this. Like just the tiniest bit goes a long way. It's like it's almost like a serum and it does dry down a little bit powdery. It is moisturizing. It just dries down a little bit powdery, which I don't necessarily like. Again, don't necessarily like the fragrance, but because I use very little of this and I film my videos on a strict schedule, so I'm not filming every single day. This might last me well into 2024 because I still have a ton in here. This is an empties, so just putting this out there. I didn't empty this, but I wanted to just show you this and just to, for full transparency, I do use this sometimes for my sit down videos. This also has tocopherol, which is vitamin E, fantastic antioxidant. It has centella asiatica extract. Like I said, may help to reduce redness and be also just boost the overall antioxidant and UV protective qualities for the skin. Okay, the next product I have is the Birch Juice Moisturizing Sun Cream, SPF of 50 plus, 4A plus. So this is a Korean sunscreen. I used this in 2023. I really liked it. I reordered it for my trip to Texas, but since I'm leaving tomorrow and it hasn't arrived yet, I don't think I'm going to get it. I'm probably just going to use the the Centel the Hyla Sisa Skin 1004 for my trip. But the Birch the Birch Juice oh my gosh I can't even say that the Birch Juice Moisturizer Sunscreen Moisturizing Sunscreen is a really great Korean sunscreen. It does leave more of a cast than I would say the the Skin 1000 Madagascar Centella sunscreen, SPF 50, but it, it doesn't leave a noticeable cast on my skin. And again, I think it just sort of provides a little bit of camouflage to the skin and just boosts the overall glow of the skin. Highly moisturizing. This has fantastic filters in here as well. This has our Juvenal A+, which again, fantastic UVA coverage. It has Juvenal T150. It has just it has a couple of other Korean sunscreen filters that offer fantastic UVB, UVA protection, uh, Uvasorb, HEB. All of these filters are photo stable, me meaning they are they don't degrade in the sun as quickly as something like Ava Benzone. Ava Benzone is the UVA filter we have in the U.S. Um, this also has niacinamide, which may be good for acne, redness. Uh, I can tolerate this in this formulation just fine. It has a few antioxidants. Has vitamin E, vitamin E, vitamin C. I think ascorbic acid which great for brightening the skin tone, for protecting against UV when it's stable. You, vitamin C isn't super stable on its own, but when it's combined with vitamin E, it's, it tends to be a little bit more stable. It also has a botanical extract, which also provides a, a good deal of UV protection. For full transparency, I also don't have an empties of this one, but I did empty quite a few in 2023. This is the Tone Up version, and this is something that I haven't really used because it's super casty, and it's supposed to be I don't know, I don't use a lot of tone up moisturizer sunscreens just because I don't like the look on my skin. It looks super casty, makeup y. I haven't been able to get this to work. Okay, another Korean sunscreen that I use quite a bit in 2023, as well as previously in 2022, 2021, is the Kanmake Mermaid Skin Gel UV SPF. 50. And this is a very small bottle. I mean, not a lot comes in here, but I get so many compliments on my skin and how glowing it is and moisturizing and just fantastic it looks when I wear this. The I think last year when I was in Texas for Christmas, I went to a coffee place and the barista was like, your skin looks fantastic. And I was like, oh, it's the Kanmake UV Mermaid Skin Gel. And she was like, oh, I can't remember any of that. But it's, this has some chemical filters. This also has zinc oxide in here. This doesn't provide any blue light protection as far as I know, because it doesn't have any tinted, like tinted filters, it doesn't have iron oxides in here. But this has fantastic UVA filters, like Juvenal A, Juvenal A+, plus, Juvenal T150. It's fragrance free, SPF 50. It is a fantastic moisturizer. Your skin is glowing and you have light bouncing. It just looks, it just plumps up your skin. It is a fan, I just love the Mermaid Skin Gel. I can't say enough good things about it. And it has somewhat of a scent. It's 
there's no, there's no like added scent. There's no added fragrance, but it has a very pleasant floral scent. I think, I think it's because it has some like leaf, flower, floral extracts, botanical extracts to boost the overall protection for the skin against UV, against pollution. Uh, so this is one reason. This it's just like a really pleasant, cooling, just nice sunscreen to apply on the skin. I love applying this. It's just so fantastic. This also has titanium dioxide in here. So it has a blend of zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, as well as those chemical filters, which I love. I love that blend just to boost the overall protection against UV. But yeah, the only criticism I guess I have of this is like the small size and container, the small bottle. You can get this on Yes Style, Style Vana, I think, as well as, I think I started getting this on Amazon because it was coming a lot quicker. Style Vana and Yes Style take like at least two weeks, I feel like, to get anything in because they're all coming in from China, I suppose. So Amazon is where it's at. Another sunscreen that I used up that I actually got for as a gift uh, from my sister is the, is the PCA Skin Daily Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Plus. This is a 1.7 fluid ounce. This is an American sunscreen. It's a combination sunscreen of zinc oxide, octanoxate, and octocrylene. Generally speaking, I can't tolerate anything with octocrylene, but because this is a blend and has zinc oxide in here, I don't really notice much of irritation on my skin or my eyes. I don't, that being said, I don't put octocrylene based sunscreens near my eyes like this. I tend to put on maybe a Korean sunscreen under my eyes just so I, cause I can tolerate that better. And I still have that protection all over my face and my, and my neck. But I put this on my neck, put this on my face, and this does leave a little bit of a cast because it has zinc oxide. And I think for, I, I'm not sure if people with deeper, darker skin tones have used this, let me know down below and if this has worked for you. This can go really well under makeup, I suppose. I don't wear makeup, but I would expect that this would go really well under makeup. And it's an SPF of 50 plus, which I love. Again, I got this as a gift, so I didn't pay for this, but I did get, I went through it quite sufficiently and I tend to use this on its own without anything else on, on my skin. Again, it does leave a little bit of a white cast, but I actually prefer the way it looks on me. And sometimes I will put on the, the Elta MD tinted mineral sunscreen on top just a little bit to add a little bit of camouflage to that white cast and to provide just a little bit of extra protection against blue light, visible light. This is a fragrance-free, oil-free formulation, which I love. It's also a very good moisturizer. This has oat bran extract, which may be soothing, may provide some antioxidant capabilities. It has sodium hyaluronate, which is a great moisturizer, a great humectant that holds onto a lot of water. It also has caffeine, which may help to, I guess, transiently tighten up blood vessels and tighten up the skin and provide a little bit of antioxidant protection against the and against environmental factors. It also has some vitamin E in here, as well as as well as some active components of chamomile. Chamomile has some soothing qualities, some antioxidant qualities as well. I do like this as a non-tinted combination sunscreen with both physical and organic filters. So if you've used this, let me know down below. I'll leave a link down below as well so you can check it out and see what you think. Okay, the other mineral sunscreen, purely mineral sunscreen that I've used is the Mineral Moisture Defense SPF 50 by MD Solar Sciences. And this is the pure mineral sunscreen with zinc oxide 17% and titanium dioxide 2%. This will leave a noticeable cast on your skin. And if you use this on your face, it will leave a noticeable cast on your face. I've tried to use, I've tried to put a tinted mineral sunscreen over it, like the Elta MD tinted mineral sunscreen, and it just comes out looking super powdery. It accumulates under the eyes. It's super noticeable. I find that the MD Solar Sciences tinted sunscreen, which I think is like an SPF of 30, goes well over it because it's super, super moisturizing and rich and uh, I wouldn't say light, but it provides a nice camouflage and it doesn't dry down as powdery. But that being said, I do like this MD Solar Sciences Mineral Moisture Defense. I think this goes really well on the backs of the hands. Sometimes I will use it on my neck as well. It has some iron oxides in here to provide a little bit of camouflage, but it is very moisturizing. Again, it dries down a little bit powdery. You'll notice that there is a noticeable cast. I think I put a little bit too much on the backs of my hands, but sometimes I will put some on the backs of my hands just to protect against, you know, like sun. Oh, that actually dried down quite well, really easily. I've noticed though that when you put sunscreen on the backs of your hands, it doesn't provide you a good view of what it looks like on the face. The skin on the back of the hands and the skin on the face are completely different. 
I find that when it disappears on the hand, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna disappear on the face. I'll put it on my face and it's like starkingly white. I like to put it on the backs of my hands, on the body. I think this is actually marketed for the body. I'm gonna put some on this hand too so I can provide a little bit of protection from the, the UV that's coming through the windows right now. And like I said, it has titanium dioxide in here, zinc oxide providing UVA, UVB coverage, protection, as well as some iron oxides for blue light protection, visible light protection. It is very moisturizing. It has some ceramides in here, which are natural moisturizing factors that just boost the overall skin's moisturizing capabilities. As time progresses, ceramides can decline. Your skin already has natural ceramides, but just boosting and replenishing it with topical topical formulations like this helps to just boost the overall moisturizing moisturizing capabilities of your skin. It also has Camellia sinensis extract in here, which is green tea extract, helps to provide that extra protection against MMPs, the sun producing or inducing those MMPs, protects against that, helps to inhibit that to a certain extent, and protect against UV. The iron oxide is against uh, visible light, blue light, and it has some other botanical extracts in here, cranberry fruit extract, that may help to provide a little bit extra protection for the skin as well. One of the other MDs I have is the Avene sunscreen. This is the Intense Protect SPF of 50. The reason why I bought this was because I think I saw this on Dr. Dre's channel and she like highly recommend it, recommended it, she really liked it. I bought this and used it and it. I think she recommended it. I bought this online and it took me, I think I bought this, it, it's a European sunscreen and I bought this on like Amazon UK or something. It was through like some weird means and it took a while to get to, get to me. But I believe that this offers, it's a pure chemical sunscreen so it has fantastic protection against UVA, UVB. I think, let's see, what, what are the filters in here? Uh, oh, it looks like it has Uvenol A+, T Uvenol T150, as well as Tenosorb S. I love Tenosorb S, and, and I love Uvenol A+. And it, yeah, and it's supposed to just protect against, you know, not only UVA and UVB, but also blue light and visible light. It's supposed to protect against the longer wavelengths of light that penetrate the epidermis or penetrate the skin very deeply and cause lasting changes in the skin. So I loved that. That being said, this is super greasy and it also makes me look yellow. It provides like a jaundice looking appearance on the skin. It has like a yellow tint to it, which I couldn't get behind. I could not wear this. I was, I bought this and I just couldn't put it on my face. So I put it on my body. I put it on my arms, on my legs. This summer when I went outside in shorts and short sleeves, I put this on my arms, my legs, my neck. It still provided a little bit of a yellow cast, but it wasn't as noticeable on my face because people are looking, people tend to look at your face more than like your body. I assume, I, I'm thinking, more than like your legs, your arms. So again, I put this on my neck, avoided the face, and yeah, I if you're gonna buy this, if you're gonna try this, just know that it does have that yellow tint. I don't know if they've reformulated it at all because I bought this like early, early, early on in the year. So if they have reformulated it to reduce that yellow tint, let me know. Maybe I'll try it out again if I can if I can even find it online. And the last skincare sunscreen empty is the L'Oreal Revitalift sunscreen SPF of 25. And this sunscreen, my mom actually gave this to me because she didn't realize this was a sunscreen. She thought it was a nighttime moisturizer, put it on, and her eyes were burning to the dickens. So I decided to just take it, use it. This has perf perfume, it has fragrance. I don't like the fragrance at all. I'm not thrilled about it, I'm not jazzed about it. The SPF of 25, also not thrilled about it. It's not fantastic protection, but it does have retinol palmitate in here, which may have some anti-aging effects. And it has SPF of 25, which I think is plenty if you're just staying inside and you might have some exposure to windows like on a cloudy day or something. I think this is just fine. You don't necessarily need like a pure mineral tinted sunscreen. You're not going outside. This is what I sometimes will wear when I'm just like staying inside all day. If it might be a rainy day or I'm just like not getting a lot of sun exposure at all, I'll put this on. Cause again, it has that retinal palmitate, which ha which is just good vitamin A derivatives that may help to protect, may help to improve collagen synthesis in the skin and may just help to overall lift and firm the skin. So I like that. I like how that's in a sunscreen. I think that's actually a great combination, a great anti-aging combination. Again, I don't rely on this like every single day. 
and I don't necessarily know if I can recommend it. If you use it and like it, you know, go for it. And I think it's better than nothing. And again, it has an anti-aging retinal palmitate in here, but I don't think I will be repurchasing this in 2024. And that is my sunscreen empties video for 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like these types of videos, let me know down below by hitting that like button. It just gives me an idea of what I should be making. I want to make these types of videos every single month, just like a skincare empties video or what I've used in the month. And if you like this type of videos, let me know down below. And again, if you've used any of these sunscreens or if you had a favorite sunscreen that you used in 2023, let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear more about your experiences with the sunscreens that you're using because I'm always looking to add something else into my collection. And that'll do it. Thank you again for joining me for this sunscreen empties video. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season. I will see you in another video. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great one. Bye.